man, do I have a lot to learn. This is the result of my first official project. Let me show you how I got here. This is the third video of a series where I'm putting together my new Avid CNC machine. If you haven't seen the other two videos, I'll be sure to put them in a playlist down below. All right, picking up where we left off in the last video, there are three main things that we need to figure out before we can do our first project. We need to install the waste board and we need to figure out our work holding if what layout we're gonna have in our waste board. And then I need to figure out what I'm gonna do for dust collection. Before we get into cutting our waste board and kind of getting it set up, let me talk you through kind of my thoughts on uh, waste boards because everybody's approach is different based on the things that they're gonna do. I view a spoil board as truly a spoil board. Some people call it a waste board. I view it truly as a waste board. This is a sacrificial piece of MDF that is meant to be torn up. Now, I don't wanna plunge a half inch deep into it. That's not my goal. There are some people that have a different approach and that's not bad. Um, some people don't wanna mess up their spoil board. But that's really, in my mind, that's its purpose. Now, I want it to last as long as possible, but the reason I doubled up my MDF is because this top layer is truly replaceable. I used composite nails um, to attach it. There's no glue. So I will always have a change out. So that's just a one-time thing. I assembled that. When this waste board gets torn up, I can take this four by four sheet of MDF off the top layer and replace that and get a nice clean surface. So that is my thought process about how I approach this waste board or how I'm going to approach. Now I have thought some about putting threaded inserts into this tabletop and not going crazy like every inch or two inches, but maybe going every 12 inches. I do like the idea of having those threaded inserts uh, and being able to put different fixtures on the CNC bit, but I'm gonna hold off on that because I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna land. Uh, and I don't want to put all those holes in this screw in the threaded inserts. And then if I'm treating this as a true spoil board, say this gets torn up just hypothetically in three months time, I don't want to have to go take all those threaded inserts out um, and put them all in again. Just, I don't know if the squeeze is worth the juice, if that makes sense. What I've learned for my usage in my case is I like to have a right angle in this bottom left hand corner here on the edge that way I can set my zero my offsets to that point every single time it's the same same point and I kind of work off from there I kind of spread out I kind of spread out from there for a while now I've had my eye on composite nails using composite nails as work holding now this isn't the most economical way to go but it's quick your CNC bits can cut through them and not suffer any damage. So I've used brad nails before. Brad nails are, it's the same concept, but uh, a little bit different. If your bit hits a brad nail, it will put a ding in your bit. So I'm really excited to see how these composite nails are going to work as work holding and what situations they work. I think the thing with work holding is that there are so many different uh, possibilities. Every job kind of requires a different setup. Uh, so by no means are these composite nails going to be used in every situation. They're going to work fantastic in, for sheet goods, tacking them down really quick. But when it comes to like hardwoods, um, we'll have to see how well they drive through. You know, I cut a lot of walnut, three quarter inch walnut. Will it hold? Will it go through three quarter inch walnut? Um, that's all yet to be seen. Obviously there's limitations here but there's limitations to every bit of work holding. Doesn't matter what kind it is. So I've hooked up a game controller uh, to control my Avid, basically to wrap it into place. Now, typically you would just use the arrow keys or the mouse, um, but this, this is a cool addition. Uh, So I can move it wherever I need to quickly on the bed. And it's not just one direction, right? Like I can only move X or I can only move Y, I, but I can move both directions at the same time. So 
So that'll be really handy just when I need to wrap it over to an area, bring the machine forward or back. Um, still to do the fine adjustments, if I needed, you know, uh, zero or get any like really fine adjustments, I'll probably still use the keys um, because this is pretty touchy. Although you can adjust the sensitivity. So stay tuned on this. I'm sure I'll make some adjustments, but this is a cool thing that you can do. It kind of, you, you feel pretty powerful to be able to control a CNC, a big CNC like this with a game controller. So cool add on. So this is my thought process on my dust collection setup. So I purchased this used dust collection setup from my friend Jeremy, who's uh, a woodworker. He had it set up for his, his whole shop. It is a customized uh, two horsepower Harbor Freight dust collector, uh, completely modified for his setup. It worked great. He had it set up on at least five tools and had uh, blast gates on every one. Now I am just gonna have this set up on one tool. There's not gonna be any other tools in this garage space because everything else has its own dust, dust collection system down in the basement. So I don't need all of this is the conclusion I've come to. I bought it all from him and I this is overkill. One, for the space that I have. Uh, there's just not enough space in here for this setup. Two, uh, on this backdrop right here on this wall, um, I want to paint a background and make it look really nice. And I don't want the dust collection covering all that up. All that up. So with all of those things a consideration, I decided just to use the two horsepower dust collector that I did purchase from him. And it's gonna go to a, a, collect, a collection bag, which I've purchased. And so this is still gonna be a custom dust collector, but it's gonna look a lot like this one. I'll put a picture right up here that uh, of the dust right system, I believe. That's where I got the idea from. And so it's just gonna have one hose that goes over the top. And I'm currently working on 3D printing my own dust boot um, from Pete Squared. I'll link his information down below. Um, he just recently went through the iteration process on his same CNC um, for his 3D printed dust boot. So I'm gonna try that first. That, in a nutshell, is where I'm at on dust collection. All these pieces need to come together and I'm still waiting on those pieces. In the meantime, let's cut something and let's, uh, without surfacing the wasteboard, keep that in mind, I still need to do that when the whole dust collection system comes in. But I have got a little shop back here that I'll keep cleaning up the mess. Um, but I'm really eager to cut something. So let's get a piece of wood on here and have some fun. So let's chalk this up to learning a lot. Um, so what happened here is I learned that my work holding isn't acceptable for what I'm doing. That's gonna be a learning process. Obviously this uh, setup puts a lot more pressure on your work holding and um, that's something I just need to learn. So what happened here is I was using two pieces of double-sided tape underneath uh, and then I was, I shot these Raptor nails in. So uh, what happened here is the thin uh, wall that's left uh, snapped. And that means that the Raptor nails and the wood and the double-sided tape were not holding down here. So the bit didn't break, nothing broke. Um, just the piece basically broke loose from the work holding. So 
my whole the whole premise here was to use the double-sided tape as my tabs so I didn't have to use tabs and cut them off um, I just peel the double-sided tape off the back uh, and I left a little bit of an onion skin that's perfect my depth is perfect here um, everything went really really good except these the problem was these you can see this one cut all the way through if you pull this double-sided tape off and look these raptor nails are not shooting all the way through this three-quarter inch material which it's no fault of that because I knew this was pushing the limits even though I'm shooting an inch and a quarter raptor nail um, going through hardwood I mean it is a composite plastic nails they have their limit uh, so now I know that three-quarter inch hardwood I'm not using raptor nails um, I don't know if double-sided tape would be sufficient enough. That's yet to be seen. I opened this video with saying I have a lot to learn and that couldn't be more true. Just because you know one system or know uh, one CNC, yeah, there's still CNCs, but the workflow is different. And so I'm excited to get out here and just start practicing and figuring out what I need to do for work holding, figure out you know, there's just different forces at play here than there was on my desktop CNC. Figuring out software and where buttons are and uh, how to optimize is a process. I'm excited to share that process with you in upcoming videos. Again, if you haven't seen the other two videos of me assembling and what this CNC is going to mean for my business, I'll have a playlist right here that you can check those out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.